Hey, welcome back to Plastic Weekly. My name's Tyler Norton, and today I'm joined by three hopefully really fun guests to talk to. Uh, first of all, directly below me, we're going to do the uh, the Brady Bunch thing, is Dustin Curtis, the root setting manager at Hub Climbing in the greater Toronto area. And I'm also joined today by Tony Reynaldo, the owner and operator of Kinetic Climbing and Fitness in Columbus, Ohio, and Marco Fiore, the owner and operator of Windsor Rock Gym in Windsor, Ontario. And today we're talking about running climbing gyms without using Using grades or difficulty and so to start out I think context is probably really important for talking about a, a topic like this so uh, Tony we'll start with yourself can you just give us a quick rundown of uh, what your gym is like in terms of size and also the community uh, the climbing community in your town uh, bouldering only gym no ropes and harnesses 5,000 square foot foot 3,000 square feet of wall give or take an inch um, I'll Obviously, I'm a 24-7 gym, so I kind of modeled a little bit after what Thomas has at the Denver Bouldering Club, 24-hour uh, access, seven days a week, and a lot of the community here is obviously 18 and up, so I, I have a lot of uh, career professionals, first career professionals out of college, and people basically with disposable income uh, that can infor, uh, afford a membership, um, and it's a mix of all kinds of backgrounds. I've got everything from medical to uh, legal and firemen, police, you name it, the gamut range is wide. Is there a bunch of a climbing community in Columbus before you guys showed up? Uh, um, ooh, I mean, there's been, there was one gym here, there is still a gym here that's been here since the early 90s. What I brought kind of to the table was a little bit of a different approach, a little bit more of a grassroots DIY approach, um, and a little bit more of a personal relationship that kind of put people over profit for so yeah i mean it's i obviously helped grow the community here but we're in columbus ohio it's super flat there's nothing but cows in. um it's a it's a college town and and headquarters to nationwide insurance but at the bottom of it uh we're four hours away from the red and four hours away from the new which is just a little bit long for most weekend trips so we're not quite that close to uh world-class climbing as i would like to be especially oh, since i lived in cincinnati ohio yeah, four, four hours too long. Well, when I was in trip, Cincinnati, I was two hours. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking like here in Ontario, Ontario it's, it's like four ten, hours. It's like a ten-hour drive. drive. We're like, yeah, it's an easy weekend trip because there's nothing else. So, you guys are so yeah. spoiled up there. Um, Marco, what about yourself? It, it, it's so yeah, Windsor Rock Gym, Windsor, Ontario, end of the four hundred one. Been here for about four years. Started spending more time in Windsor. Realized very quickly there was no gym here, so you know, took a huge risk. Built out a 4,000 square foot facility, bouldering only. Ended up building a gym that I would want to train and climb at. Thankfully, people like it. There was no community here. There was no climbers here. You know, we just really had to start from scratch. Like one-on-one climbing, super basic routes, just trying to get people to understand the sport, the lifestyle, and, and everything that goes with it. All right, so uh, next let's talk about how your walls are organized. So most gyms, if you walked in and asked them, like, how do your walls work? First thing they're going to talk about is how they indicate difficulty and starts and finishes. Um, you guys, uh, what's uh, what's the system that you guys use? Far, uh, Marco, I'll start with uh, you. Yeah, so we, so we have a lot of steep walls here. I mean, we have a pretty solid 45, you know, five-lane campus board in the front. In the main room, we have a 25-degree wall. 35, small vertical, 15-degree wall, 7, 5-degree slab. And then up in the mezzanine, we have a 30-foot traverse wall and a 75-degree roof as well. So all the climbs in the gym are all monochromatic. We do tape start, tape finish. If it looks hard for somebody, it probably is. If it looks challenging for somebody... It's also good. And if it looks easy, people know what, what easy routes are. So what's interesting is that, we, you know, we don't do colored volumes or anything like that. Like all of them are, are black. They're in for, for all, the, all the climbs. It's really just like everyone's in a comp every single day. The thing about us, too, is that we do a ton of turnover. I mean, we're, we're putting up new stuff every single week, which keeps it really, really interesting. Uh, you know, the setting really needs to be done to a point where it's not hurting anyone. So, yes, you can have a hard climb, but it's still not going to ruin somebody's shoulder or tweak a finger because they can't because they can't do it. 
keep in mind too, when, when I first opened, there was nothing of anything remotely related to climbing here. So my job here is to make sure that people love to rock climb as much as me, as much as you. I also need to take the opportunity to people have to understand how to learn to move around. So putting up easy routes, putting up hard routes, you're still teaching people how to move and being able to read a route and get their footwork better and everything that goes with them really does <clears throat> an excellent job for when they have to go places like outside or to another gym. To me, that's really important more than, you know, the yellow route being a V8 or anything like that. So just to be clear, you do monochromatic setting and then the, like the start tape is just the same color as the holds, right? Correct. Okay. And then Tony, is that pretty much the same system you guys are using? Yeah. Monochromatic start uh, or well, monochromatic setting. Um, the finishes vary between tape finishes. If there's a specific hold we want someone to end on. But my overall railing on the top of the wall is like um, it's like double thick two by four that's been uh, planed and rounded that I sanded and grinded all down nice. So it can either end on the railing or on a specific uh, fixed. Our volumes are also the same color as our walls. So they don't actually, you, you can't, like when you first walk in, you sometimes don't even see because they they're, they match the wall color. So they blend. And so they're just extensions of the walls the way we kind of use them. Okay. Cool. Um, so, so yeah, yeah let's talk a little bit about the route setting kind of thing, because when, uh, like when I've been on cruise, first thing you do when you come in in the morning is where are we setting and how hard do we have to set? So for you guys on the public side of things, you're not sharing difficulty of the problems. You're leaving that up to the climber. Um, how do you communicate about that within your setting crews? And I imagine you guys see, both seem to be active as setters, so I'm not sure how big your crews are, but are you assigning problems grades when you talk about them with your root setters? Or do you just like say, you know, we're going to be harder than this red climb over here on this wall? Like, how do you communicate that kind of thing when you're not actually putting labels on your problems? Tony, I'll let you go first. Well, the big thing for me is a lot of the, it's hard finding good setters in Columbus um, because again, we're not a destination like Denver or San Diego or San Francisco where you've got lots and lots and lots of strong climbers. I have to build my setters from start. Uh, sometimes they've never turned a single wrench in their entire life. So, I mean, I have to start at zero and run them through the, you know, standard protocol stuff that all of us have done for years and years. Uh, just understanding tool safety and ladder safety and how to put holds up properly and all that got, that good stuff. Um, in terms of the difficulty, it's also they don't have a lot of exposure to outdoor climbing. So, like, I try to take the setters outside um, to Waco or to the Red or someplace to give them that outdoor experience that then they can kind of bring to the indoor environment a little bit and then open up that creativity side of it as well. But it, it's tough sometimes because telling them, oh, I need this to be kind of V4 or V5, they may not, not have um, a metric for that because they've never done something at that level outside. So it's, it's it's kind of a challenge, and that's one of the main reasons why I also don't have the ratings is I just don't want to get into that big, big art um, and try to have that minutia that, that floats around with that. I mean, there's other reasons as well. Well, I'm sure you'll ask those questions. Uh, I have to train my setters from zero, and I think Marco does too, because we just don't have this pool of guys that we can refer to that climb double digits that, you know, 20 years of experience that'll come in and start setting for us. We just, I don't, it doesn't exist here in Columbus for me, at least. I have to, I have to develop them from, you know, the ground up and um, teach them. What about you guys in Windsor? Yeah, we're in a very similar situation. I mean, you know, the, the setters that are being created here at the gym, they're going to be world class. And, and I think being able to provide that mentorship, getting to a point to understand, you know, movement, putting in things that people can understand. You know, the three questions that I always like to ask for anyone that's potentially interested in setting here is, you know, how long have you been climbing for? Have you ever climbed outside? And how long you've been setting for that, that outside component for me is super important because it really does change people's perception of what you can create inside. And I think getting people to a point to understand and getting back to your question earlier, I mean, when we strip a whole wall, you know, what, you know, what holes do we have that are clean? You know, what volumes that we, that, you know, 
are clean that we can use. And it's really just putting up easy, medium, hard. I mean, if, if we needed to bucket something to clarify to the team what's going up, you know, easy root is a big bunch of problems. Medium roots, you know, is a whole bunch of different styles as well. And then hard stuff is, is hard stuff. So what's interesting here in winter is that, you know, similar to Columbus, I mean, there's no outdoor climbing. It's super flat here. You know, there's, there's really good world-class areas that are accessible, but, I mean, it, it, it's a weekend away. I mean, people aren't going there kind of after work. The interesting thing that happens, though, is that no matter what we put up here in the gym, people are jumping on it. And if it's easy or if it's hard for them, it still doesn't make a difference because they're actually getting on the climbs, which is really interesting because by default, you're just building like a monster factory. So all the guys and girls in this gym are climbing super well and super strong because they're climbing everything instead of a traditional gym where they would look at a climb if it looks good they would look at the rating and go wow you know that's kind of too easy for me i'm not going to try it or the opposite of that could also be wow that's really hard for me i shouldn't try it and, and i think setting up those barriers really um really stalls the development in terms of becoming a long-term climber um just just to follow up really quick you mentioned that you kind of just bucketing climbs into like easy, medium, hard when you set. Um, I'm sure you guys in your head, you guys have a pretty good sense of, I need this much of this kind of difficulty, this much of this kind of, like you understand what your community needs and you want to see like, you know, it feels about right to have three climbs of this approximate range on this wall or this wall or this wall. If you're giving feedback and forerunning and stuff, like does it, is it really coming down to you two in particular in your particular communities of like who the arbiter is of, of where things need to be? Cause if, if these guys don't necessarily have idea of where the grades are, I'm guessing it's coming down to you for now. Um, unless you guys might have a deputy that, that also has that kind of judgment. Like how are you handling, um, uh, communicating like, hey guys, you put way too many easy climbs up. I need you to crank these up by like this much. How do you deal with that? Yeah, that, that doesn't happen yeah, I mean, so much. It really, it really just turns into does the problem flow? And I mean, you know, Dustin's the master of this. I mean, you know, be, being able to have a route that's basically the same consistency from start to finish is super important. So as the setters are putting stuff up on the wall and as we're starting to forerun, if there's one stopper move, we're going to change it. If the flow of the climb is so cool that all we need to do is, you know, rotate something or, or add a foot, we're going to keep it just the way it is. So it, the process becomes a lot more creative instead of we need to put up another jug hall right here and we need to put up, you know, another crimp root right here it's way more dynamic which becomes way more creative all right so i want to talk about if uh, when somebody comes into your gym for the first time um you know they're probably receiving some kind of orientation talking about safety this that and the other thing you know when i do an orientation for our gym first thing we talk about is how you see what's easy and what's hard um are you guys letting your new cl like i'm talking about like first time climber right never climbed another gym they walk in, are you just telling them, hey, climb what you think, climb whatever you want? Or are you giving them some kind of indication of like, you know, here are a few that we recommend you start with? Do you give any advice on how to identify what might be a good climb for them or not? Uh, Marco, we start with you. That's a really good question. So we get two types of kind of first timers. The ones that have never rock climbed before, the ones that maybe come in with, with a member. You know, part of that tour talks about you know how physical the activity is how warming up is super important getting them to just move around is way more important than saying here are three ladders you should do that will make you feel good about yourself that you should continue the sport with we don't do that intro the intro is really focused around how to fall properly how to warm up how to move around getting on stuff our community is quite small. Everyone here is super friendly. You know, if somebody comes here for the first two or three times, after that third visit, people are already saying hi to each other, which is, which is a really nice thing that happens with a community and, and family that, that's so tight. 
what what I get a kick out of is when the first timers come and they've always they've obviously been climbing and they come from another gym and they come they come visit, they come visit Windsor for whatever reason they say oh yes we climb at such and such gym and my answer is always the same it's like yeah it's not like that here I said you know what the first thing you notice here is that there's no ratings on anything it's all monochromatic by color but the colors don't mean anything and we don't do range grades and we don't do colors or anything else they get really confused for a second up until they actually start moving around and actually start to experience, you know, the roots here. We're not a big facility, so every problem that gets put up here has to be as good, calm quality problem as it can be. I mean, if everything up is, you know, three stars, it provides a really good experience. At the end of all those sessions, on the way out, question's the same. How was the session? Oh, it was really good. And from the climbers that are visiting from somewhere else, they come back, they go, you know, it's kind of neat climbing on stuff that you don't know how hard it, it is because I'm actually trying harder and I'm also getting on things that I probably wouldn't have because I didn't know how easy and or hard it was. So, you know, it really helps justify kind of what we're doing here. And it's just really interesting to see how people interact with these types of <clears throat> climbs when there's no number attached. Because all, all, all it becomes is movement and, and nothing else. Tony, how do you guys on board? Uh, well, it's a little, probably a little bit different in the States. From so I have to show a video on falling safety. Obviously, we the have Jimmy a Fairfield participation one? agreement. It, yeah, I have to show that. Um, I'm getting ready to shoot a new one that's going to be a little bit it's branded for us it's going to be our video we're just going to redo it under our our, our thing and there's standard release waiver procedures they've got the rule sheet and then i do a one-on-one -on -one tour with every customer where they walk through the gym and that gives me a chance to kind of upsell the facility at that time um and then talk to them get to know them ask them some basic questions hey what do you do that kind of thing that helps to kind of break the ice and maybe kind of calm down some nervous tensions, especially because bouldering already inherently has a little bit of, um, it can build timidity in people just because there's no ropes. You know, there's that stigma of, oh my God, there's no ropes. I'm going to fall. I'm going to hurt myself. For true new climbers, I'm not talking about the guys that have been climbing for a while, but uh, one once that tour ends, then they kind of come back in the front office. We finalize the transaction and get them their shoes, et cetera, and, and get them going. But Marco's right. It's it's a situation where I don't introduce the 15 things they should climb first. I might point a few things out along the tour and say, hey, these are some really fun climbs that you should definitely try. But I do do the whole warm up, you know, stretch, go in the back, show them the fitness area, try to tell them about getting their heart rate up and spend some time over, over in this side of the gym stretching. To, it helps, one, to keep people from getting hurt. You know, as a gym owner, part of your job is is to give them a great experience, but you also want them to walk out the same way they came in, not on crutches and not, because uh, an injured climber is not a, not coming back in anytime soon. Um, you want to make sure people have a great experience, but also come out with nothing more than torn up skin and, you know, um, some sweat maybe. But to real quick, to get to the ratings thing, it's kind of funny because Marco had pointed, uh, pointed out, it's really for me about breaking down the the. the sort of subjective nature of the rating system and giving people an opportunity to get better without the barriers of that rating number stopping them. And that is a conversation in the tour because people will ask, well, how do we know what's easy and what's hard? And I say, well, it's my answer is it's a big buffet of fun. Everything's a big buffet of fun. Try all the vegetables. That's what I always say in the tour. And, and the thing is, is they learn really quickly that if there's no number associated with it, they're more likely to try and even though we know a first-time climber is not getting up a v8 let's just be realistic that's not going to happen that doesn't mean they don't try it they don't get on it to at least see and and that may be a really far-fetched uh example but it keeps people um from saying no at the start of the gate like i'm not going to enter the race because that race is too hard well how, how do you know you might not so i i like the open-endedness of not having the rating system from the standpoint of there's just no judgments on something based on an arbitrary number that someone else assigned because the, these guys get stronger quicker i have learned especially i've been in 105 gyms in the last four years 
and the handful of gyms that don't have rating systems, I think, have the nicer communities because the conversations are more about the fun of climbing and not about, like, the the minutia of a six versus a seven, and that becomes all they talk, talk about. And then the other issue is I think the climbers in general are progressing faster. I could be completely wrong, but I'm just saying from my assessment here and from what I've observed visiting all these other gyms, um, you have an opportunity, at least if you're willing to put in the work. I'm not talking talking about a once a month visiting climber. I'm talking about somebody that's pretty dedicated and comes in consistently. I feel like, like they improve a lot quicker because there are no fences. There's no fences to say, oh, that V5, well, I can't climb that hard, so I won't even try that. No, they try it. And they, you know, hopefully they get up it over time or they get motivated and super psyched to train more and ask more questions and share beta and try to find a way to get to the anchors, you know? Um, just to set up context for my next question, uh, starting with Tony and then Marco, how old is usually the oldest boulder problem on your walls at any given time? Like a couple months, less than that? What's the deal? We leave nothing up for more than three weeks here. Okay. And what about you, Marco? There's an occasional outlier that somebody's been working on because I have an open-ended policy with all the members. If, they, if they're if they really close to something and they're a couple days away, I just say, hey, tell me, you know, blue problem on the mothership. Um, can you leave it up for a couple more days? Yeah, yeah, fine. No problem. We do that for anybody. They just have to communicate it. But three weeks, turnover. Okay. What about you, Marco? Uh, yeah, we're about four weeks, five at the very, very high end. The, the cave upstairs doesn't get stripped completely. We tend to add and remove roots as they start to get run over, but we're, we're always pretty consistent with four weeks. All right, so the, the question I, I wanted to, oh, go ahead, Dustin, if you got some. Yeah, so I just want to jump in and ask, like how many boulder problems in each of your facilities? Marco, I'm pretty familiar with yours, so I, it's more directed at Tony, but Marco, you should answer as well. Right now, I've got 115 up. 115 problems problems that you can get on right now that are at least the count that I did right before opening. I got 115 problems up. Cool. And Marco? Yeah, we're, we're sitting at about kind of 50, 60 on the average. Okay. So yep. the question I, I wanted to know was like among your members, the people that are there, you know, a few times a week, have they developed a, a way of communicating between them about difficulties? Like, you know, I'm sure if you walk into the gym, your friend's sitting on the mats and you kind of ask them, yo, what's really good this week? They'll point out some stuff. But do you find there's kind of this developed shorthand or, or way that people kind of discuss what's hard and what's soft? I imagine you guys still have people that come in and, you know, have been outside recently and just start, you know, saying, you know, I, this is probably a seven or this is probably like a V5 or whatever. But uh, does that even come up or do people really not talk that much about difficulty in their own conversations? You know, there, there's no real context to that. I mean, I, I've never heard anyone discussing, you know, what one of the blocks is in terms of a V grade. I mean, it doesn't really happen so much. It's really about figuring out the beta, figuring out the movement, you know, watching other people do it cheering people on i mean you know it's just it's just like you are you know you're climbing with your friends in a place that has really awesome bouldering and it just happens to be you know winds or rock gym so there, there's not a lot of that going on I, I think i think the ratings thing the, there's no reference point for a lot of the people in our community so it doesn't really come up what about you Which guys I, sec I second it because they don't have a reference. A lot of them, a, a good portion of my members have never climbed on real rock. Or, you know, there's some real rock within an hour of Columbus that's like makeshift 40 foot little limestone walls. But I'm talking about like rock and roll, true multiple climbing trips, you know, traveling all over the country kind of stuff. Um, I have a large population of members that just ha have not either had the opportunity because of their family life or whatever. Um, they want to, obviously it's always on their wish list but life circumstances don't allow it um so yeah i i agree with marco i don't hear it you know except from the well i can tell who the climbers are that are visiting that are from other gyms because their culture there is about ratings and it becomes a point of contention at the conversation point where they either first thing they say when they hit my door is what's your hardest problem you've got and that's a whole nother conversation but um you know what's your rating system in here and i'm like we don't have one and i usually get that kind of weird response of like well why and it, 
It's like because I just don't like the ego that it brings to the door. That's my always my default answer. I don't like the ego that the rating system brings to the door. We have climbers here that have climbed three times in their entire life, and they get treated by the climbers who are very experienced here the same. Everybody's the same here. We're all on the same. We're all fighting the same animal. Gravity's the same for all. Um, you know, you got guys here that have been climbing for 20 years with lots and lots of experience, and they welcome all the new climbers because, and, and the new climbers like that because there's not this separation or click thing that happens where, oh, the V8 climbers are over on that, that bench and the V0 climbers are over on that bench. No, everybody's in the same pile, and, and I like that that i think that's one of the main reasons too that i don't have a rating system is because i don't have to worry about the clicks forming all right so dustin you and i like so i haven't i I don't neither of us have visited kinetic yet um we will at some point if only to get some of those duck stickers because those look sick as hell Um, (laughs) i gotta uh, mail you (laughs) (laughs) we'll do an envelope together we'll we'll do a sticker exchange it's all good um but so the first time the only time i went to uh, windsor rock gym i was just visiting family and I, i wanted to check the place out and i had probably the most fun climbing that i had had in probably like 10 years straight up and like reflecting on it i was having difficulty trying to decide whether that was because a hundred percent of the experience was fresh, right? Like I've never climbed on any of the route setting that your crew does. I've never been in the environment. I got to meet a ton of new people. The ungraded thing was all new. So I, I wasn't sure if it was like, oh, hey, this is really novel. And so I'm enjoying it. Maybe I would get, you know, maybe it would just become the regular gym if I climbed there enough, or if it was something genuinely special and, and, whether I should like try and uh, uh, figure out what about the root setting or what about the grading was really making things so awesome for me. Dustin, I know you try and go down to Windsor as well, kind of as often as possible to root set. So I think the question for you right now is we both work in a, in a city, in a metro area that's full of gyms. Like the density of climbing gyms is absolutely nuts. Um, you just like you turn around and take a few steps and you run into another climbing gym right in front of you. Right. So these guys have been spouting off all these like awesome um, uh, attributes of having a bouldering gym that doesn't use grades, but nowhere in Toronto. In fact, I can't think of. Well, there's maybe one or two in Canada that are gradeless. One of them, unfortunately, recently closed. Rest in peace. Um, but. Is this something you would try and sell like at your own gym or within gyms in Toronto? Like it, what's the what's holding people back from doing this in a city like TO? I think I think the big challenge with bringing it to Toronto is that like uh, that people give numbers power in Toronto and they want to see progress. They want to have something to say like, "Oh, I made the jump from this grade to this grade." Uh, listening to both these guys, there's also like in Toronto, a large conversation about the climbing experience revolves in like revolves around the grade. Whereas, uh, like listening to Marco and Tony, it sounds like that they've just it, there's no language to have that conversation, so it doesn't happen. Like uh, Tyler, for you, think about like the number of times you was walked into a gym and had someone say it, like, "Oh, it's probably not a blue tag; it's probably green," or vice versa, like. <laughs> even though we're moving towards like getting rid of the V grade and putting like colors or whatever circuits, it's still like, there's still a conversation for, I think, uh, Toronto climbers that they, they either want to see progression or want to see or have a metric to calculate their progression and see that. So um, are you, are you talking progression like against yourself? Cause if it's progression against yourself, these guys are offering something where, hey, I've got all these climbs. At one day, you try and get to the top of them, and that's progression for you. Are you saying that, like, not you know, we're saying Toronto climbers, but are you saying climbers in general are kind of chasing grades to put them above other climbers? Do you think that is like not not facetiously, genuinely? Um, do you think that's something that climbers like internalize as making the experience more valuable? Is saying, yeah, like fuck you, Tom. I just climbed my first V five, and you're scrambling around on a four like an idiot. Like, is that part of it for real? <laughs> I, I I wouldn't say it's that extreme, but yeah, I think there's <laughs> I yourself. think there's like <laughs> I think there's a little bit of competitiveness and also like just the way that new comp climbing is happening. I think it's so hard to grade anything because like how are you going to grade running across a bunch of volumes and then catching some form of coordination jump? Like it doesn't. It, who's to say that's V three, V four, V eight? Uh, what if you suck at running? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
but I, I, I will I will state that I'm super biased towards uh, Windsor Rock Gym because Marco and I grew up in the same gym climbing, and he just basically took that model and ran with it. And I think like the no grades, I really like no grades. I wish we could move away from grading altogether because I think it just doesn't make any sense anymore, and it removes all those conversations that like don't necessarily add a toxicity to your gym, but they they add a negative. Whereas like what Marco and Tony are doing just seems like it's focusing solely on a, a positive thing about like climbing is cool. This is fun. This like, it doesn't add uh, an extra layer of language where it's like, this is fun, but it's not this great. Okay, and how so, many times have you heard that? Well, within like within our gyms, like straight up, when we talk about like the virtues of our root setting, right? We try and talk about creating balanced climbers and always offering challenges to different people. You can do that in either of these systems. So if like I like this, it's at least fun or at least something different. If we tried to go to owners right now and switch over, what would be their defenses? Like what's what like what is it that's really keeping us in this particular system? If we can't like if we're saying it's like uh, uh, it influences bad <laughs> ego dynamics and it puts people <laughs> in the wrong mindset for growth like what's what is the defense uh i don't know part of it would be that like in this like one of the things that you mentioned in the city there's uh, there's 12 or 14 gyms or something like that so like if one of us does it we all have to kind of like follow suit to stay competitive co kind of thing but also uh i i stand by i think people need like a metric in order to uh, calculate their progression. I think that's important. Um, I don't know if like it'd be interesting to see if a gym could do it in the GTA. I would, like I think it would be awesome because I don't like grades. But well, let's talk uh, about that, Tony. You visited hundreds of gyms in your lifetime and over many generations of gym climbing. When you look at the scene now and like pick whatever big city with lots of gyms you want, like could a gym like yours? you know, the size is irrelevant, but would this system make sense? Do you think it would be welcomed by that community? Or do you think that people's familiarity with grades in that neighborhood would, would kind of put you at a disadvantage? Well, it boils down to leadership. It boils down to the ownership embracing a philosophy, the setters embracing the same philosophy, everybody agreeing on it and saying, we're going to take a stand. And I think Marco does that as an owner. I think he said, look, I'm not going to introduce that into the well. Um, and that affects his setters because he's the leader of the team and he has that philosophical view, which he shares with his setters. Um, and same with me. I mean, I, I, I break that. I just don't like giving people validation. I, I figure gravity is going to tell you really quickly whether or not you can get up something. And, and for me, it's like I throw people's egos just because – they did I certainly celebrate. We all celebrate. You'll hear us clapping, especially with people. You know, uh, I've got a few climbers here that are a little bit overweight, and we're working on trying to get their weight down and, and doing it in a, in a more non traditional way. So we celebrate when they get up something and they're on the struggle bus on a boulder problem for 15 tries. You know, we've all done that. Um, but I just, I, of the gyms that I visited, it really comes down to leadership if they're willing to take that stand and create a cultural change. Even if it's against the grain, I mean, that's that punk rock DIY ethos that I live by. I'm not afraid to put a, a line in the sand and say, this is what I believe and this is what I think works. And come hell or high water, I'm going to stand by it. I don't blow in the wind because 15 people come in here and voice a negative opinion. I'm like, well, you got an opinion. That's great. But I'm going to I'm going to do what I think is right and what I believe in my heart. Um, and so far, I mean, knock on anything made of wood around here, um, the community community here has responded positively and again you're never going to satisfy everybody either but i've created a culture here and if people want to be a part of that they subscribe the ones that need validation i'll be honest they go to the other gym and, and that's fair too there's a place for both of those types of climbers uh, i'm not saying one's right or wrong it's just what i believe here and and what i subscribe to uh, I just know that the gyms that I've been in that don't put emphasis on the ratings, I've had greater experiences, more exciting experiences because it's more communal about the fun. It's about the experience and not some metric that goes, well, this is a hard line of what it is or isn't. And, and Dustin's comment about the kinds of climbing today that we're seeing, the form of the move is not traditional to outside climbing. Uh, I know Marco and I, I both try to set more rock realistic climbing here, movement that would give you benefit in an outdoor space. 
you train it in here, you can apply it outside. This new format of movement that we're seeing in the competition, climbing and all this running, paddling, backflip, jumps, parkour hybrid <laughs> stuff. Um, um, if you try that at Waco, you will be broken, land in a satoll or a cactus. <laughs> if you do it in Bishop, you're going to roll down a cliff and they won't find your body. So <laughs> it's, it's really an issue of uh, how do you rate that stuff? I mean, I mean, in competitions, they don't assign ratings to the World Cup problems. There's no V grade assigned to them. It's either a top or not um, or a half. I don't, I don't pay attention attention to it because it gives my head a, a, a brain aneurysm trying to watch how they do this stuff but for me i also want to give the climbers here an accurate depiction as best as i can in a plastic environment to things that are conducive to an outdoor experience i want to help them prepare to have an outdoor experience if they get the opportunity if they if they have that blessed opportunity to go outside and climb the red or the new or pick pick any climbing area it doesn't matter so, Marco, if you like, if you decided you wanted to expand, and your your big move was to yeah, plant, lose, plant a Windsor everybody. Rock gym right in the middle of downtown Toronto, um, do you feel like this philosophy would hold up in that kind of environment? You know, I really do. I mean, <clears throat> Windsor. I mean, it, it's a monster factory in here. I know I keep saying that. So he, here's a here's a typical conversation that I've had with owners and setters for many years. Hey, how's the gym going? Cool. Any cranksters in the gym? Yeah, we have a couple of folks, you know, a couple, a couple on the youth team that are coming up. I'm like, okay, who else? Well, you know, that's kind of about it. So seeing how hard people are climbing here and they don't know how hard they're climbing here makes me super, super happy. Because when they get to go outside or they get to go to another gym and they come back and they go, Wow, I, you know, I, I did a V4 or I, or I sent a V6. It's like, of course you did. Of course you did because you're, you're a good climber and you're strong. So I, I would rather that validation happen in that way more than giving a number to something in an indoor environment that makes them feel really good about themselves but doesn't mean shit when they go outside. You know, when, 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 there's yep. when, there's, when there's guys climbing 5.11s in their flip-flops in BC, I'll tell you right now, they're not 5.11s. They're just, they're just not. <laughs> so someone needs to draw a line somewhere to say, if you are preparing to go do something awesome, give yourself the right tools to do that. Instead of everybody gets a ribbon, everybody is awesome, Everybody's going to be as good as they can be because we're giving you a number that makes you feel good about yourself. And then they get themselves in a situation where, you know, they're, they're not doing so well and their brain cannot comprehend why it's not working for them. Because, you know, they can do V8 in their own, in their own gym. Why can't I do it here or there or outside? It's just, it's, it's comical. It's laughable. So if you were to build something smack dab in the center of the GTA and just put up awesome roots with no fluff, people would get better. And they would be thankful more than I really need a number to tell me how hard I'm doing. It just it doesn't make sense. All right, Dustin, uh, like uh, you you and I last like last big point and then I'll let everybody like say their uh, shout outs and final thoughts. But like, so we talk about the virtues of this stuff all the time and the negatives. So like, just talking about the business case, knowing that we haven't really seen firsthand what it looks like when you take a structure like this and put it in w inside a community like the ones that we're familiar with. Um, what do you think? Like, let's say, like you were, I was going to say I work for a mega gym. You definitely work for a mega gym. Like just the size <laughs> of the facilities are like fucking huge, man. Joe's is still like, you know, mid middle of the pack. But one thing, <laughs> one thing that gets me is if I have a crew of new people coming into the gym, first of all, the place is packed. Secondly, there's a ton of walls everywhere and the floor space is really big. The idea of like doing a tour and giving that one-on-one -on -one time, first of all, does take a lot of staff. And I don't really get to spend that much time with climbers aside from their very first, like one, maybe two climbs. Um, so the idea of 
getting people more uh, ingrained in the community, especially the idea of like having an owner of the facility, giving people that direct time and sharing their like direct philosophy to their customers. That's not really an option uh, for us. Um, so do like, is it something that our gyms or our community could really benefit with? Because I, I just like people trying new stuff. So I would love it if a gym just swallowed this and said, hey, for like, start with three months, right? Like we're already seeing some gyms do a thing where they do a new set and they don't grade it for a week. Like that's been a thing that's existed around for quite a while. But do you think it's possible that people just say, okay, for three to six months, we're just going to try this thing. And like Marco, if it keeps going well, we're just going to do it forever. Like, could that work? Like, do you, would you encourage that if a new owner came to you and said, we want to start a gym in Toronto, we want to do something different. Can you honestly sell them on doing a grade list gym? Uh, I don't know if I could, to be honest. I feel why? like you got You got to tell me why though. Cause I, no, I no, like, no, I'm okay. so psyched for so the idea I, right now. I, I, I love the idea of going grade list. Like I, I grew up in a grade list gym. That's like, that is home to me when I go in, and set with Marco, we don't have conversations about like, Oh, we need to put this grade here or we need to do this. It's usually just like me and him talking about whether or not we need a, a middle of the road boulder or an easier boulder, or there needs to be a hard boulder. Uh, listen, I love the idea of going gradeless. I just think it's like I I think we in the GTA couldn't do it yet because like we're still in the process of switching over to the ambiguity grade of just a random color. Like there's still gyms that are using V grades, and I still don't believe in using V grades. But but you you that's would say that transition's color. going well for the gyms that have decided to do it, right? Like it's really not that big a philosophical change. I don't think it's that big of a change, no. But I think like the success of what Tony and Marco are, is are doing is that they're there. They're always there. They're they're adding that personal touch. They're having that conversation with those people and keep and, like uh, just listening to Tony. Like this is the first time I've ever talked to this dude. But like he seems like he's got a really good uh, handle on what his community needs, and he, he set himself up for a situation where like the turnover is just so fast that like. He, earlier he was saying like if you need something there's not a wait to get to it it's just like it's there it's so i think that th that's part of the success of these systems is like i think they're like marco i know is integral to his gym because like if he's not there people are asking where he is and like he's the he's the dude that that's dragging all of these cranksters out to waco in vans and stuff and so like that personalization and that uh, and that um just like owner touch is really really important for the success of this grade list system. Um, the other grade list what? gym that I know of is uh, Coyote Rock Gym, and like Jody's in there every every day, and so like you need you need to have that yep. person, that integral part of your community that's leading them through this. But I think it's really interesting because it takes away a lot of conversations that are like there's just no language for these conversations because grades don't exist, so you can't have the the argument with the root setter that like, well, that's not a V4. I can do all the V4s in the gym. I've done all of the V4s ever. So like, that's not V4. I'm a blue tape climber. I yeah, know like what a blue you, tape feels like. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, you can't have that conversation because you guys don't have that language. Sorry, go ahead, Tony. Well, no, this is interesting because you made the point about the ownership in that city you guys live are not as involved as Marco and I am well, like the way we're invested in our members and our customers we're the faces of the desk i mean we're the people you run into i do not have a door on my office there is no door you can talk to me at any time i'm here you know you don't even have to knock on anything just say hey tony um i think that that's going to start to become a conversation post covid because the gym owners that are not as invested that are not as involved on a personal basis with their members that culture needs to change. There's too much handoff to the managers and to the hierarchy below them. I, I feel like the people here invest in me, invest in Kinetic because I'm invested in them. Um, I'm here every day. When they walk in, it's, it's, almost a, it's, it's almost shocking when they come in and I might not be here, you know, because I'm out shopping or getting my kid or something. Uh, that... Marco does a really good job of that because he's the face of the company and, and when something needs to be changed, I'm extremely 
quick to pivot. I can go, hey, we need, need this piece of gear or we need more of these types of holds or, hey, we need more crimp problems. If a member suggests something like that, I'm like, great, by tomorrow, man, it'll be done or, or by Friday or whatever. Um, that, I think, is going to become part of the consumerism of the climbing is – as people are now in these cities where there are 15, 20 gyms, because we know those are happening, um, part of the shopping experience is, is, well, hey, is your owner involved? Does your investing team have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the members, or are they just the, the money strings in some office having a monthly meeting with minutes uh, versus where Marco and I are sweating every day and, and, and living the dream, but at the same time, we can pivot very very quickly and we can respond to this stuff uh i think this COVID thing is going to open up some more conversations about ownership um being more involved with the customers assuming they want to i mean i do i live for this i mean to me right. i i love my my members i they're, they're my kids or my family i mean i'm an old man so i call everybody my kids uh, um but to me it's important what i put out on the table is a good product that gives them, as I call it, it's a shit filter. When they come in here, life's shit gets filtered. You walk in my door and you have a place to have some fun, to have a good training experience, to have a full body workout, and and hopefully be challenged and laugh and 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 be okay with failure. You know, I teach them, don't get so frustrated with your failure. It's part of the process, um, which I also think that not having the ratings helps with because then they're not just beating themselves up and throwing in the towel. And we all have bad days, but I want them coming back for more. I lo like the excitement that they have. Like, I can't wait to get on that blue problem again. And that 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 keeps me ha happy. You know, it makes all this hard work and toil worth it for me. Because I just don't climb as much as I used to. My body isn't the way it used to be. I mean, I'm 55 or f 45 years old now. Um, and I'm, I'm not making excuses, but I just I ain't 18 anymore. So those days are gone. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, <laughs> let's do final thoughts. Uh, and if you have anything you want to shout out, please uh, please take the opportunity. Uh, Marco, you were kind of the uh, the starting point for all of this. So uh, first of all, thanks for for just opening your gym up to me when I came down to visit. I had a great time. But if there, you got any final thoughts on the topic, any shout outs, uh, let's hear them. Yeah, I, I think what's important right now is especially you know as, as Tony's mentioning. I mean, a lot of these gyms that have you know maybe not the best management bloated overhead, all of a sudden now have to provide good customer service. Like what a concept. Focus on the members and the people that are bringing you money and good experiences into your gym. And I think the bottom line to everything is good customer service. And I think if you can provide something that is genuine, that gets people interested in the sport, that builds climbers so that they can do something that they love for decades and decades, then I know I'm doing a good job. And if people are psyched to buy vans and go travel, then I know I'm doing a good job. Everything else is extra. But what is really important, like I said at the beginning, is to make sure people love to climb as much as me. And I'm doing my best with that. You know, shout out to the setters, to all the members at the gym, all the guys we've met on the road. I mean, it's it's been it's been a wonderful journey so far. We you know four years will be open in August, and uh, yeah, no no plans of slowing down at all. Cool, man. All right, uh, and then Tony, any final thoughts? And shout outs, of course. Well, I mean, I've got a great group of setters here that that have bought into the philosophy of hard work and and making sacrifices i mean i try to take as best care of them as I, I i do the best i can with the resources that i have i'm not rolling in dough but i give them everything i can and, and one of the things i'm really proud of is the setters that do learn here um i've had a good run of them go get jobs at bigger commercial gyms and make a good living um where they can get a little bit more money and more benefits and get into a different city uh besides Columbus, but the members here are my family, and I care about every single one of them. I know them all by name when they walk in the door, and, and to me, the most important thing is, is that the gym offers an opportunity to experience in an indoor space what you may encounter in an outdoor climbing environment, and then in turn, I try to inspire these guys to go the route that I did, which was 
go visit every climbing area in the country over 30 years and see the amazing country that we have here in the United States. I know Canada is different, but you guys know what I'm saying when I say get on the road and have that experience of living in your van for a couple weeks and visiting Waco and visiting Bishop and visiting Red Rocks and and absorbing the joy of climbing. And at no point does any of that mention a rating or a, oh, I climbed 514 or I climbed 15. That's my only purpose on this trip. No, it's about that holistic component of a shared experience with other climbers, you, you know, the campfires, the burritos, the, the the good food, the crappy food, the the, the really good weather and and the really bad weather, and the foosball, and the hacky sack sessions in the parking lot at Pete's, you know, and like, it's all of that holistic component of it, and I try to inspire these guys, um, um, because I have a lot of experience for many, many years, and, and the young generation, I want to see them enjoy what I got lucky to do, and to me, it's like handing that torch over to a 19-year-old who has, you know, um, their whole life ahead of them, and, and can go that route. Um, they don't have all the tie downs that we as adults kind of end up getting a little bit. Uh, but but I, I, I think that this conversation is something that other gyms should at least listen to is like considering the, the idea of a rating list gym and how it might culturally shift the attitude. Um, not saying take the climbing away because we all hopefully offer good movement and good climbing, but maybe we change the attitude a little bit uh, less about validation and more about fun. Cool. Dustin, you got any last thoughts? Uh, I just, what Tony was saying really resonates. And I like, I think it, from a setting perspective, taking away the grading, uh, like there's so many things that will fundamentally shift in root setting. Like just uh, for my crew, I know that like we often have conversations that are, it's probably not this grade, but it might be this grade. And when that, like, if that's not the priority, then you're talking about just movement and just making like, the is the boulder problem good and i really fundamentally believe in that as a setter i think that like the priority of the conversation should be about is the is the boulder good is it like is it accessible is it going to um are people going to enjoy it and i think like taking the grade out from that makes that conversation a lot easier all right. Well, first of all, thank you all you guys for taking some time. I know, especially uh, Marco and Tony, you guys are are busy with uh, just dealing with the business and how you're handling stuff post COVID. So best of luck with all that. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can uh, hear more from people that are doing cool things in the climbing industry. Uh, you can always join our discord server, the link down below to talk with others like this. And if you want to support the channel uh, with your, uh, with your hard earned dollars, you can always hop on the Patreon and, uh, uh, give me some of your cash. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys in the very <laughs> next episode. Thanks for watching Plastic Weekly, and we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>